I think we can all agree that 2020 has been a strange year. Besides the fact that none of us can go out and get groceries, or we can't go bowl if anyone even goes bowling anymore, another thing that people have lost is the ability to go to the gym, a, a huge part in many people's lives, including mine. Yeah, people can work out at home, and I have my own set of dumbbells, a pull-up bar, resistance bands. I have it all to do at least a sufficient amount of workouts compared to what I was doing at the gym, but doing the same thing over and over just doesn't really cut it after six, seven months has it been now. That was until one day. I was driving down the road and I saw a guy who was running on the side of the street, and I saw him and I wondered to myself, what if I ran, and what if I did that to kind of keep myself being healthy because over the past few months i'm sure like a, a lot of other people have i've kind of slipped off my routine of going to the gym or at least working out at home and my eating has gotten worse than it was before quarantine so i thought if i ran it'd be a nice way to kind of reset myself and get back into that active lifestyle but there's only one problem with that and that's i hate running you see when i started going to the gym it was probably about two years ago and I would go with my friend and we'd go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And we would, or at least I would, run on the treadmill for 15 minutes and then I would bike on one of the bikes for 30 minutes and then go home. We'd both finish at around the same time and that's all I did for the first two or three months. I'd run on the treadmill, bike on the bike, go home. Two days later, run on the treadmill, bike on the bike, go home. And as much as I didn't enjoy doing this, I knew that going to the gym was important for me. See, back then I was about, I peaked at about 225 pounds. Now I'm sitting here at about 165. And it's all because I got myself out and going. But that doesn't take away from the fact that I hated it. It wasn't until about two or three months later where I started flirting with the idea of getting on some of the muscle machines and trying out a couple bicep curls to see if I could do that stuff. And I slowly found that I really liked lifting weights. I kind of phased out cardio slowly until I, I did 15 minutes and then I would do some weights and then I'd do 10 minutes and then I'd do weights and then eventually I just stopped doing cardio. And I think that me forcing myself to do cardio like I did when I first started going to the gym is what made me really hate doing cardio. I hate running. I don't hate doing the bike, but it's not something I do anymore. And 30 minutes nowadays, as little as that is, it sounds like a lot to do. And it just doesn't seem like it'd be that fun of a time. I do the stair stepper every now and then for leg day, but I see that more as a leg workout than it is cardio. So I set myself a goal of running for 30 days and the main reasoning behind this was to see if I could learn to love running. I know there are lots of people out there that really enjoy running and I kind of wanted to get a taste of why it would be someone would enjoy doing that. But I also, you know, had the goal of losing weight because that's something that everyone wants to do when they start running. And I also thought that it would be a good idea to try and not change what I eat to see how much running really affects losing weight. So I started off with this master plan. Run for 30 days, every day, non-stop, no walking. I would wake up every morning, nice and early, because that's when I enjoyed going to the gym. So if I enjoyed going to the gym in the morning, why not run in the morning? It would give myself a reason to get up in the morning because I had been slacking since, you know, everyone has to stay home. There was no real reason to get up in the morning. When I would get up and go to the gym in the morning, I'd usually wake up at five and go at six when they open. So I thought to myself, why not wake up at five in the morning to go run? I would wake up at five and then just kind of get out whenever I could to go run. I also had the idea of expanding the route every week. That way I could start off with something small and see if I could push myself to do these longer runs. And I also decided that I would download an app to track my running. I ended up downloading the app RunKeeper and I really enjoyed it, but using my phone while running is something I'll come back to. So the first run, how did it go? Well, I'll show you my run keeper. You can see my first run was one mile and it took me eight minutes and 43 seconds to finish it. The run itself was fine and I didn't generally find myself struggling too much while running. I didn't feel too tired, especially for a first run. I felt like I really did a good job on it, but after the run is where all the pain came. I had a headache from my running. It was hard for me to breathe and it was hard to take deep breaths without coughing. And my legs and feet were surprisingly sore after the run. All of this stuff sucked, but I knew that it was something that would kind of come with time and it would eventually go away with running. 
I knew it was just something new to my body and that my legs would have to get used to it and my lungs weren't used to all the stress that I put it under when I started running. So kind of like when you go to the gym for the first time, when your arms feel all sore, your legs feel sore after your first leg day, it's kind of the exact same thing with running to where I'm really sore after the first one but I know with time this soreness will go away and I'll get used to it. That being said, the first week of running was great. I had a lot of improvements during it. I improved my first mile time from 8.43 to a 7.18, which is lots of improvement during the first week. My old mile time back in high school used to be like 11 or 12 minutes. So to even start with an eight minute 43 mile was amazing. But to push that a minute and a half faster during just the first week was wild. My breathing during the first week also got a lot better. I didn't struggle much with breathing while running. While yes, I did start breathing heavily like anyone would during a run, my breathing after the run is where I saw a lot of improvements. I found that it only took me about two or three minutes to get my breathing from where it was after the run back to where it normally is when I'm not really doing anything. It was really impressive to me that even in just a short amount of time as one week, the biggest problem that I had, which was my breathing, already pretty much went away. Even though I saw a lot of improvements during the first week, there were some doubts that I was starting to have for myself. One in particular was that my legs and feet were actually still hurting a lot. Even though my running got a lot better, my legs were still kind of sore. They weren't really sore during the day, but during running, they did hurt. And my feet were starting to get a little bit of pains around my arches. I also realized that waking up in the morning kind of sucked. I found that it was a lot different than going to the gym because the purpose behind me going to the gym early in the morning was to make sure that there weren't a lot of people there taking equipment that I might need. When it comes to running, there's no one else there, so there's no reason to wake up early in the morning, or at least at 5 a.m. is what I found. I also started to regret the fact that I decided to do this 30 days in a row with no breaks. I found that I really wanted to take a break, but I pushed myself not to. It would have been a lot better if I would have done two days on, one day off, two days on, one day off, and just done that but I really wanted to push myself to do 30 days, even though it hurt my feet and my legs in the long run. I also didn't think that I was really ready for longer routes. After the first week, I did bump up my route from about a one mile route to about 1.15 miles, but I didn't want to continue making the distance longer every week because I found that I wasn't really up for that. Over the next two weeks, I found that everything was kind of the same. I found that there was nothing really special happening during a lot of my runs, but I also wasn't really improving too much. I saw a lot of improvements during the first week. Like I said, I pushed my mile time down by about a minute and a half, but I realized it was unrealistic to continuously push myself to get a faster mile time. That's when I eventually realized that there's no need to push myself every time. I even met a friend online in a game called RuneScape, and he gave me some really good advice that I'll read out real quick. When I was telling him about me running and how much improvement I had seen, he said it's great that I've been improving, but he gave me these tips on when you first start running since he was already about two years into running. He said, take it easy, go slow, like slow slow, to where it almost feels like you aren't even jogging. If you start getting shin splints, rest for the week and just do walks. Once you run your first 5k without walking is when you'll find whether you love running or if it just may not be for you. But I'd wait till you do that to determine if you really hate it. Well, obviously I never ended up running a 5k because I kept myself to about that 1.15 mile distance. I did take to heart what he said about taking things slow. Since I got myself down to about a 718 mile, I figured that there wasn't a realistic way to push myself past that every single day. So I stopped striving for getting a new fastest time. So I started focusing on consistency and making sure that I got through the full run without walking. After about a week is also when I realized that I needed to change up my morning routine a little bit. Instead of just getting up and going out for a run right when I wake up, I did a little reading and realized that I should be drinking water and stretching before going out. I was kind of scared at first of drinking water because anytime in the past if I've eaten or drank something and I would go for a run, I would get a cramp in my side. But I read online that if you drink about six to eight ounces of water, it's enough to hydrate you enough in the morning since it's right when you wake up and you haven't drank or eaten anything in a long time, but it's not enough to really give you a cramp. I also started doing small stretches to where I would do kind of these lunges and stretch out my legs while I was going up the stairs, and I would do a few butt kicks when I was standing outside right before going out to run, and I found that these small little things really helped improve my run a lot and made me enjoy running a little bit more. Even though I had a 718 mile and I thought that was probably about the fastest I would get, 
On day 13, I was just having a really good day and I had a 702 mile time. Once this happened, I set myself a mini goal of hitting a sub 7 mile time. Even if it was a 659, I would be happy because these were some of the best mile times that I had ever had in my life. I also realized that what you ate the day before also significantly impacted your running. So whether you are running in the morning like I was or whether you run at night like some people, you should really focus on what you eat before you run, even if it's six, seven hours before you go on your run, it really will affect how you do. Of course, with more time, my breathing also got better. I want to stress that this is some of the biggest change and the most improvement that I found while running. I thought it was really amazing the fact that on my first day, it would take me five to 10 minutes for my breathing to get better. But only a week, two weeks, three weeks in, my breathing significantly got better after the run and I could recover way faster than I ever thought I'd be able to. My least favorite part of running in the past, besides the running itself, has always been how tired I felt after the run, but knowing that only a week or two of running could really help your breathing out that much was crazy to me, and it really amazed me how much better I got after my run at recovering. During the second and third week, I also found that I was really enjoying the runs. Even though I still had to force myself to get up in the morning and force myself to go out to run, I found that after the run, I was really proud of myself and throughout the day I just felt more healthy and I really came to understand why people run. I felt good about myself even though I maybe wasn't eating the best things because I didn't want to change up my eating during this. I found that I generally felt healthier and I felt proud of myself for getting out and doing this thing that I really didn't want to do. A bit of my leg pain also went away. My foot pain kind of stayed a little bit but it was never really something that would have stopped me from running or really bothered me too much. My legs kind of adapted to the different work that I would have to put in while running, and maybe it was just my shoes that were affecting my feet. Compared to the second and third week, the last week was kind of a completely different story. I found that I really wasn't enjoying running at all. I don't know if this was because I knew I was so close to the end of this 30 day challenge and I just wanted to get it over with, or if it was because I was pushing myself to do these runs every day and my body was just giving out since I was about 21 days into it. Even though I wasn't really enjoying running, I found my consistency slowly and slowly got better. I was consistently running these lower 7 minute times compared to when I first started and had high 8 minute times, and I was really surprised with myself. During the last week of these 30 days was also the first time I got back into the gym since quarantine, and I made the mistake of going in and having too much of an ego to lower my weights too much. I went up to do some of my first squats since quarantine, and I really hurt my legs, and this is something that affected me for about 2 or 3 days while running. So a little bit of advice that I have is if you want to start running and end up going into the gym for the first time or go back to the gym since quarantine started, I would really take it easy specifically on leg stuff since running can be a decent workout for your legs. As the last week came to a close, I also put that sub 7 minute goal dream in the front of my mind. At the very beginning of my run, there was this big hill that I would go down and go up and it would really slow down my pace. So I thought to myself, why don't I run my route backwards so that that big hill would be at the end and I could keep a nice faster pace so that I could get this sub 7 minute mile. And that's exactly what I did. On the second to last day, I ran the route backwards for the first time just to get a feel for it and learn exactly where the one mile point was since I was tracking my runs. And then on the last day, I really pushed myself to go for that sub seven minute mile and I got a 646 on the last day and I was really proud of myself because of that. After everything's all said and done, I sat down and took a look at the goals that I set myself at the very beginning. First off, did I lose weight? And the answer may surprise you, but I didn't. I actually gained a few pounds during this process and I mainly think it's because I didn't change up how I ate. And I think I actually ate a little worse because I thought to myself, well, I'm running, I can afford to eat a few extra calories and I can just make up for it in the morning when I go on these runs. And I think that was the complete wrong mindset to have. As you can see by these two pictures here, the one on the left being my first day and the one on the right being my last day, my weight actually ended up going up about a pound where I started off with 169 and ended with the 170.8. And again, I think this was because of the stuff that I ate during this. If you're someone that wants to get into running just to lose weight, it's more important to focus on food and what you eat before you start doing exercises like this. While exercising is very important, it's a common saying that 70% of losing weight comes from the kitchen and 30% comes from the gym. 
So if you really want to lose weight, I would start with taking away things that you eat that you really shouldn't be eating. Like maybe you have a habit of eating ice cream every night, or maybe you drink soda. Take away those things and slowly work yourself into eating well. Once you have yourself a base of a good diet, then you can push yourself to go out and go on these runs, or maybe you can even start going to the gym and lifting weights. And second is, did I enjoy it? And the answer is no, but also yes. I'm gonna say no because I pushed myself to do it for these 30 days, but yes because I really enjoyed the feeling of accomplishment that it gave me throughout the day after I had done the running. If I was to do this more, I would definitely run without my phone and that was one of my biggest complaints during the running. Since I'm someone that doesn't own one of those straps around your arm that you can put your phone into, I always had to go for a run with my phone clenched in my hand. And even though I got to listen to music while running, I would happily take away the music to just go for a run without having to worry about the phone in my hand because there were a couple times where I actually dropped my phone and I always felt that my arm got tired from having to carry my phone. And obviously the sub 7 minute goal, I did hit that even though it was the very last day. I was really proud of myself for hitting a 646 mile time and I thought it was really crazy that I could take off 2 minutes off my mile just from 1 month of going on runs. If I were to do this again, I would definitely change the fact that I pushed myself to run every day. Like I said, I would probably do two days on, one day off, or maybe even do one day on, one day off, and just stick with that. But running every day was just too much for my body, and I really wouldn't have continued doing it if it wasn't for this YouTube video that I'm making right now. I would also rather run inside. It did start getting a little cold near the end of the run since I started this in August and ended in September. Even though September still has some nice weather, it started to get really cold during the mornings, and I would have rather run inside. Even though I would have run inside, that does not mean I would run to run on a treadmill. I would rather run on a track inside, or maybe even a track outside. That way it's a more consistent route and you're not going up and down these hills like I was. Also, since I wouldn't want to take my phone with me, I would probably track my route one or two times just to get a good idea of the distance and then leave my phone at home and time myself with a timer on my phone if I really wanted to know how fast I was going. Any recommendations that I would give to any new runners is to first, not overdo it like I did, and to second, start with a good healthy diet if you want to get into running. If you're someone that's not already healthy in the first place, running can be one of the hardest ways to start a healthy lifestyle, so it would be a lot better if you start with eating better. Third, if you could find a friend to go on runs with you, that would be great. I had a friend that wanted to come on runs with me, but on the very first day he ended up tripping and hurting himself, so he never actually ended up going on any runs with me. And lastly, I'm not a pro at running, I only did it for 30 days in this video. If you really want to start running, I recommend you do a little bit of research on the best way to do it, but definitely follow the advice of someone that's a lot more experienced than I am. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and this is really different from the rest of the content that I make. I usually do gaming videos, but I really do like to give advice, and I want to do more of these 30 day challenge videos. I actually started another 30 day challenge on the same day that I did my last run, so if you enjoyed this video, look out for another 30 day video that's coming in about a month. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, I would really appreciate it if you dropped me a like, and if you could hit that subscribe button as well, even if you don't like my gaming stuff, it'll still notify you when I upload more videos like this. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.